Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the New Gods podcast episode 13. I think it is. I thought I've lost count. Um, and today we have our good friend Worm Girl back again. Hello, hello. Um, today we are still going over viewer submissions because there's still like, there's like 60 left or something. And we're doing like two an episode. So we're going to keep going on this forever, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> But first, I wanted to uh, start off with an interesting discussion we were just having before we started. We were talking about, um, because Miro said he's going to change how glass shards work a little bit, and a couple other things, but Raccoon doesn't want to be spoiled, so we'll just focus on glass shards today. Um, and we were just discussing like how, how you would change it so that they're not so strong, because they're right now, they're just super strong, and they basically have no downside, and there's no reason not to use them in, in half the fights right yeah so, so how do you guys think we should can, uh we should change them so they're a bit more balanced i can go back to what i said like previous episodes back in the podcast which was you know the the flashlight strategy <laughs> yeah so the thing about it was that in terror observation mode the game will be just in darkness and having a flashlight showing where you're aiming based on where you're moving to be able to see what you're doing. It would be really good way oh, to like add this so darkness. Add a lighting mechanic. system like, like in the, the first, first game. game. Yeah. 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 Or maybe it only happens at night. So only at night it's when you're like, okay, I need a flashlight, I need to find batteries. And I need to, you know, keep myself on these batteries. And the batteries will pretty much replace the glass shards. And what the batteries do is that either you use them to recharge your flashlight, which lasts for maybe like I don't know, 20 minutes in the game. Uh, or you go ahead and you take out the battery and you use it to throw it at an enemy's face and then you blind them at the cost of not being able to see in the night. Did they have batteries in real life back then? Like flashlights I and batteries? I don't know, but I remember that I, th I think I've seen the image or the item description of, of a flashlight. Hmm. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. Like, do I want to make it harder for me to see in the darkness or impossible to see at night? Or do I want to, you know, go ahead and blind the enemy with some batteries that I have? How would a battery blind so somebody? In... <laughs> well, the thing about it is that you just use these kind of like batteries that are like glass in a way. They're filled with this like lightning thing, whatever the fuck. What? Powered by logic or something like that. <laughs> Some shit. Joe, help me out on this shit. Come on. You, you blind someone by throwing a battery at them? Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And the battery breaks and then they blind it. So wait, wait, wait. You want to remove the... completely glass shards in favor of the batteries? Yes, yes. Or you could just flash them and that flashing from the flashlight would take yeah. a lot of battery. You could make right. it a spell that that used batteries or something like a logic spell that you oh yeah had yeah yeah, yeah. And had a big bright flare but I I don't agree that that would be the perfect change but I think it would be doable. Raccoon is gonna create a battery toss up the branch. Anything to make glass shards not a thing that anyone can just you know use that is but blinding can still be a thing that can happen. What what could be done is the question. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Like, I made a video recently about um, the balance changes coming, uh, and between the mention, of course, there was the glass shards. The thing I said in the video was the introduction of a new status called uh, Deep Wound, but uh, probably it's gonna be changed. That's not a cool name. Like, my, my point is, let's imagine glass shards. If you get, uh, because I, don't, I got a lot of uh, comments in which they said to give them bleeding or infection, etc. But... Would really bleeding and infection make you consider if you should use glass shards? No. After you get one yeah. time bleeding or one time infection, you're gonna use glass shards until you have them, then you heal them, and so you're fine. So the point is, there is there there there, there needs a definitive solution. So my deep wound status basically um, functions in a way in which uh, it can only be healed at a at a Sylvian ritual circle, and every time you use glass shards. Uh, you develop this status more, and the more this status is developed, the more you take physical damage. But, 
I got another cool idea from the comments that they want to express. Uh, some people told it actually, not only one. But overall, the other idea could be that uh, the glass shards uh, um, stay stuck in your hand when you pick them, and this causes you to not be able to handle your weapon properly, reducing your attack. Hmm. Okay. So you get a pseudo blind. That's another effect. suggestion I like. The, the infection thing I was thinking about, it wouldn't really affect Marco or Lydia or Karen since they are immune to infection. I don't know why. I hope Mira remembers that, to be honest. Hmm. I would just um, make blindness wear off after a couple of turns. Yeah, that's, that's ah, what I was going to say. Eyes grow back. Yeah. But <laughs> is there any status effect that goes away after a while in Fear and Hunger? Stun. Uh, Bloodlust? No, in enemies, in enemies, in enemies. Stun. Burning wear off? Burning keeps going, I think. It doesn't go away. Uh, burning keeps going. Burn keeps going. Dust? In enemies? Yeah, yeah, keeps going. No, I, I see, like, it does it run off? Like. No, 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 in fact, uh, Burn does not run off. I don't know that it, like, needs a precedent, because I think it would just be the, the best, um... The best way to balance it, you know, you're you're gambling on getting like a, a two or three turns of of the enemy not being able to hit you. Yeah, and uh, that's often going to be very worth it if you can get one of their limbs off or something. So one thing that happens with blinding, though, is that if you blind the head of the enemy, the next hit that's going to be coming out is not affected by blindness, but that... the next one is. Yes. Yeah, that is something I I wish that um, I wish uh, would be fixed. No, wait, wait, wait. However, whoa, 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 whoa. if you blind, if you blind the arm that's gonna be attacking you, it is blinded during that turn and forever. <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> that's why blinding limbs needs to be removed. Point. That's so yeah. awkward. <laughs> wait, raccoon. Yeah. Wait, raccoon. Rac raccoon. <laughs> you mean that when you blind the head, if the opponent attacks with another limb which is not the head, they are still not uh, with accuracy reduced for that turn, correct? Exactly, yeah. Oh, okay. For okay. that turn. And then just next turn, be, that, uh, every, every single thing, like the, the whole body will be blinded. Yeah, I just wanted and to precise that uh, if one. you blind the head, the head is already uh, blinded or at least partially blinded because... Uh... Yeah, the head will miss in that turn right away. Okay. But there's not really any enemies that hit with the head other than the goblers. There's a lot of... Um, there are a lot of things in the game that don't... Oh, yeah, uh, that one. Yeah, that work like that because um I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of event that just updates at the top of the uh at the top of the round and i don't think it would be too hard to um you know add in a check before every single participant in the battle attacked yeah just a um uh, well, technically it's not difficult because i looked into it uh, it's an event that triggers at the end of the turn there is an option to make it so that it's instantaneous hmm. mm -hmm. I wonder if that's a balanced choice on, on purpose, then. Well, it might be for stuff like, um, so in the first game, guards will still tackle you if their head is off. Mm. And maybe I think it's like supposed to be I like... I really uh, hated that, to be honest. I think the, uh, they, they fixed that in the second game. I, w I want that back the because I hate it. In the original game, guards getting a tackle off, or rather getting an entire turn off before they dying, was a glitch that Miro didn't know how to fix. And then later decided to keep as a feature after he learned how to fix it. Yeah, I, I actually really like it. It makes him way scarier. Is he... Also... Is he going to go back to Fear Hang 1 to fix that, I wonder? I hope not. Uh, no, uh, at, at this point, the guards are designed around the fact that they die at the end of the turn. So, like, their puzzle works in that way, so I don't think yeah. they will fix it. But uh, what I wanted to oh, say yeah. is... Um, I think there is a reason for which... Uh, the blindness happens at the end of the turn, because we are playing a turn-based RPG. But I think the purpose is that, in reality, we are not literally taking turns to attack. The, the attacks are, ex are being executed simultaneously, mm, so like, yeah. when we blind the opponent, yeah, the head is gonna be damaged. But if the opponent was already swinging their blade at us, they are not gonna suddenly miss us because we blinded them. Yeah. They were still going for us, so I think that's the reason. Um, I have... I from... Sorry, you yeah. go. I was gonna say, I think just from a gameplay perspective, it's um, it's unintuitive though, and I think I think games should generally play more intuitively. Uh, the, if you do something and <laughs> <laughs> ah yes, Fear and Hunger, a game known for its intuitive <laughs> mechanics, like Honestly, you just cannot 
it cannot keep with its mechanics from one to two. That's why I look at it. It's like, oh, I cannot hit the head of the enemy because I hit it will still tackle. No, in Terminal, they don't do that anymore. Well, no a lot of intuitive don't mechanics, like how barehanded proficiency uh, doesn't do anything. Mm. <laughs> God damn, um, I think we should change all glass shards to uh, piles of sand. And then it's pocket sand. <laughs> and then it wears off after like two pocket turns. Sand. Yeah. I think that'd be what good. Oh, you get sand, I wonder. Well, just just literally just replaces the glass sprite. It's not glass anymore. It's the sand. Just piles of sand everywhere. You would buy it off of Pocket Cat. There oh, you go. Yeah. Shit. There you go. That's what he's doing in there. He's getting more sand out of his pocket. He's he's not yeah. uh, doing anything else. <laughs> he's, you trade yeah. one contestant head for one pile of sand. That's cat litter. That, 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 for me, that works. Uh, I kind of I so, don't want it anymore. If it's cat litter. <laughs> Before I give my opinion on how to balance it, uh, until it explain what it does, I never bothered using it. It uh, it, uh the glass shards uh, or the pocket sand. Glass shards. <laughs> The glass shards that are able to apply are able to apply with a seventy percent chance of blindness and with seventy percent chance of blindness two, which is a blindness that works uh, even on limbs we are targeting the head. Hmm. Actually, I have and I have a suggestion. Always while hits, but sleeping. it's only seventy percent of blindness. What? It always hits, but there's only seventy percent blindness. It does not always hit, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's still a very, very high chance of blinding whatever you throw it at. Like, it's it's rarely a bad idea to throw it at a boss. Yeah. Huh. And this is, this is after the nerf. It used to be way stronger. It used to be, like, 90% or something ridiculous. It was 10% stronger. Oh, there you go. The blue switch. Yeah. I mean, if I were going to pick anything, just make it last one turn. It turns out throwing a fistful of glass at someone's face usually doesn't actually blind them. And uh, most things thrown at your face are really easy to counter by lowering your head a bit so that it hits the uh, forehead. So that's the that's the movie scene, right? The the killer is chasing somebody and they throw something in his eyes and he's mm, like, ah, you know, exactly. and he recovers and goes, keeps going. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, I, I would... I'm thinking more like uh, throwing something at someone's face so that they flinch back to get an opening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that feels that like makes case, sense. Uh, like if if you make it so that they last only one turn, the event in which the other limbs uh, reduce the uh, lower their accuracy happens at the end of the turn. At the end of the turn, the status will disappear. Though, like, how would so you make it instantaneous? That? You throw it at their face. Yeah. The rest of their attacks that round won't hit, and then round two back to normal. Hmm, okay, for sure this is gonna help because you will need a lot more glass shards if you still want to abuse them. So, yeah. I it mean, wouldn't be super useful on, on solo runs, though, unless you had... Um, no, it does, know, it does, it does, it does. If you rev up three times, you get a really big... Uh, oh, yeah, true. yeah, yeah, extra rev. Yeah. And you've still yeah. got like stuff like Black Smog, which now works... Wait, no, we didn't want to spoil no, Raccoon. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, standing on a landmine right now. Sing Would single turn glass stuns would work really well. <clears throat> Without spoiling anything. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my idea for, for blind would be leave it as it is, right? But now enemies, every limb gets a unique attack, which is like a flail, which deals higher damage, but has a really high chance to miss. Oh. So... You know, maybe it'd be like ten, like something tiny, like ten percent chance to hit, but every limb is flailing yes. around and they're going mad, and it can hit multiple but targets at the same time. It, I I was playing a game called Cassette Beast at one point on stream, and whenever you get blinded in the game, you have a f uh, you have three attacks to go from, and they all have five percent chance. One is calling for an ally, the other one is calling for uh, for defending and trying to defend the next attack, and then the other one is attacking. And attacking always applies a critical hit, but it's a five percent on every single one of those decisions. Mm. So yes, you can choose. You can even make it so you get you get blinded, 
and you increase your accuracy to 100% with your next hit, and you end up always critting the enemy. <laughs> so it's really good. <laughs> so that could be nice, like, for a, maybe even blinding yourself for a playthrough. You can still see, maybe, I don't know. And then having an ability that gives you more accuracy for that fight. Finally, or, the accuracy abilities will be useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And you, you, you stack them all, like... All yeah, the, but uh, all I don't know. Them, I think, think conceptually. We are talking about uh, uh, fear and hunger. Like, imagine telling a player you have to become blinded on purpose to increase your critical chance just to then use barefisted proficiency. So you have like, do you, do you see? Apollo, it's, it's a little bit. Uh, yeah. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a marriage to get your arms on if you don't want. It's not that perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this no, sounds. Yeah. I'm actually really liking the sound of this. To be honest, I think this sounds great. <laughs> no, I disagree. I think it's too much like uh, trying to become uh, a sort of a strategic, competitive uh, multiplayer Pokemon or something. Well, I the thing about it is that hunger. you can make it. You're not forced to it. You can make it if you want. You can just also restart the game if you get blinded and you don't want to continue playing because, well, that's a good thing. You can still play, right? No, no, no. I mean, that, 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 that destroys every form of discussion, though, if you just say, oh, you can just not play it. No, the point is, uh, why? Do you think when you become blinded, you should uh, have more critical chance of attack or uh, whatever? Because it's funny. Because you have five percent chance to hit the enemy. Because you're putting all your strength yeah. in, but you can't you can't see what you're doing. And you don't I mean, see that, as, you know, you don't see it as something that can be done unless you have a few playthroughs and you're rewarded as a player for knowing that there's a skill or an item that gives you more accuracy. Yeah, but do like. You say you put all your strength in that, uh, in that smash, so usually you don't. You do it only when you're blinded. Yeah. I guess uh, you're, you're blinded, you don't look like you're going like, huh, 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 you know, and you hit one of them, like, right? Yeah, if you want to take this from a simulationist perspective, do we want to do that? Throwing all of your strength behind something means that you would be less likely to hit and less likely to hit something important. Hmm. I guess choosing the limb would also be random from then on as well. Hmm. Yeah, it's a tough a one. A blind team. <laughs> it's a tough one. I do wonder what Mira's going to do with it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I just, I... I just wish they don't make it so that the whole screen goes dark because I really want to do a blind playthrough. <laughs> but I can't. You can. Really you can. Memorize the map. Yeah. Man. Oh, oh! I know, I know what Mira should do with that. I know what Mira should do with that, yes. right? You can get an item. You can get a um, what do they call it? Uh, a cane, right? And if you had the cane, then you get a small. You know how in the first game on what was it on the easy difficulty, you had like a small little bit of light around you all the time. Yeah. It'd be like that if you had the cane equipped. If you're blind, I could just make a noise when you walk into a wall. <laughs> ding, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 and then it's got diff different noises that. for the different terrain. And it would be very <laughs> funny if you could steal the cane from um, from Doctor Keffer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, Doctor Keffer's cane. <laughs> oh, every single time that you move, you can do this like in Identity Five. That every single time you move, you can see the world around you for like a few seconds, but only when you're moving. No, you have to press. You have to press the C button, uh, the the wheelchair button to to tap. The top I, of the floor I, I guess if you're Olivia, then you can press press the C button in order to see. I see. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Right. Mashing the tap that's, button that's for good. five hours straight. I just want to hear you his dialogue when he realizes you've stolen his uh, his blind guy cane. <laughs> it's like fuck you, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know one thing I could actually really good for a new impla spell. Mm. Maybe if you finish Master Mode fighting against Rare, you get Rare's eyes. And they allow you to see in the night. Oh, yeah, yeah, eyes of Rare. That would be nice. Like, oh. having the whole place just lit up with light. Yeah. Nah, 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 That will nah, be really nah, good, nah. I think. You don't like that, Rufula? Maybe, hang on, mm. it's it's like patches yeah. of the screen are lit up at random. Because you, you know how his, his eyes look down at random? Yeah. yeah, there's no way that he'd be able to program that. <laughs> it sounds really also, good, though. 
I think before implementing new spells or something, I think we should before uh, start working more on what we already have. Like, uh, I'm already a little bit discontent that... Uh, oh, wait, actually, I shouldn't talk about the new skill we have. So, no, 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 no. Uh, it's a spoiler for Raccoon. But still, uh, that, like, look at a Rare Skill Tree. A Rare Skill Tree is a, is a useless mess. Like, uh, unless you are uh, in Blind Run, you will never take a Rare Skill Tree. Um, Never. I guess I, I, I disagree a little. It's not the best, but it's still useful for the extra mind and golden gates if you want to do a run like that. Will um, you really need the extra mind so well, badly? It helps. Well, some scales with extra mind, so you get more mind from my save mind. What, what's his other Star, skills? Please. There's uh, um, aura reading and what's the other one? Because he's got four uh, golden gates. Being able to uh, talk to... Oh, yeah, golden gates. Being able to sense what people are saying in their head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Or Re reading mind reading. Mind yes. reading it. Uh, yeah, kind of useless. Mind so reading is interesting, people... but... Oh, yeah? I was going to say, a lot of people um, on their on their first run especially will um, kind of make their decision based on sort of like role-playing. Like... Um, mm. uh, like, if you're playing as Levi and you're just playing the game for the first time and you get this question, like, which god do you pray to when, you're, um, when your dad is killing your mom and you're, you're locked in your room? And, um, like, depending on how much you know about the setting or not, you might pick one and be like, that's my god, I'm going to stick with that one, you know? And mm. So I think there's more to it than just a gameplay I, I see what you mean, but uh, I still think the, like, yeah, I agree. And uh, I actually like doing a little bit of this during uh, Fear and Hunger runs. But I still think that this, uh, regardless of gameplay, uh, regardless of uh, uh, roleplay, sorry, the gameplay also should be kind of interesting because it, it is kind of underwhelming that, uh, yeah, there is Golden Gates in Rare, uh, in Rare Affinity, but uh, you will never go to level 2 Affinity with Rare. Like... Wow, I can see where all the contestants are. Wow. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. The, the most reading is nowhere the near that good for a polo. I went straight for a rare first time because I was like, oh, yeah, this is the guy that's important this game, the way depth was. He'll probably have a good skill three. <laughs> and then I got aura reading and I was like, wow. <laughs> this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, no, no. In fact, no. But, uh, <laughs> because it uh, it uh, signals the moon scores, the, if I remember correctly, not the contestants. Only the moon <clears throat> scores. It used yeah, to do yeah, the. Yeah. It, it used to do the glitches. living contestants. It also glitches. It also glitches. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah, one yeah, of yeah, the early videos, just, it like, did for the. For example, if you talk to. You go. Really, what Miro should be focusing on instead of. Uh... Honestly, adding new areas or new skills is just making the current places not empty. And I don't mean like yeah. having enemies spawn in, just like have characters interact, have people show up in places. Don't make 90% of the contestants completely like nowhere on the map for 90% <laughs> of the time. <laughs> yeah. So that, um, that was one of my, my, my only real complaints about the game is that I, and I think I said this um, last time I was on the podcast, was I wish that the characters would kind of talk about the fact that they're in a death game a little bit more yeah, um, yeah. and it's, it's possible that not everybody remembers the dream very clearly but they all talk about it and they all say you know it, it seems like they remember it pretty well and um you know at one point levi uh makes direct mention of the fact that he's been told to kill everybody and so does samari and mm. um you know that's like a, a major plot point in like most of these movies or, or, or books or whatever about um, like battle royales, it's like these people don't want to kill each other and one of the first things they're going to talk about is how do we avoid doing that? Mm. Like how yeah. do we get out of this? Yeah, they just sort of seem to ignore the fact that they're in a battle royale, don't they? Yeah, they do. Except for, um, except for uh, Pav and um, uh, uh, Kaligura. Yeah. Yeah, they're the only two that are like, all right, let's I get mean, this shit going. Henrik <laughs> also does that one yeah. thing, but... But it's, it's yeah. like... A, it's, but it's not the end. It's just a, it's a complete sweep. It's, it's yeah, it's just August part. August kills uh, Tanaka in the tower. Yeah, it takes a while yeah, for yeah, everyone else. At the end as well. At the end as well. I, didn't, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, uh, Miro has said that he, he actually wasn't sure that he had left that scene in at one point. Um... 
I would have to dig up the quote. I believe he once offhandedly said that it feels a little bit out of character for August. Yes, he did say that. And I was like, no, it yeah. doesn't. Like, I don't, I don't, no, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> I, I feel like, it, but he, it feels so like, like half-hearted. Um, I feel like if August wanted to kill everybody, he could pretty easily kill half the, the, the team. And I, you know, I'm sure he's, he's had to do bad things before in his, um, quest to hunt monsters, but like, um, I don't know. He just, he seems so unprofessional at the end. Yeah, so what what I think he was carrying with August as well. Sorry. What what I think about that scene, so for anybody who who doesn't who isn't familiar with that scene, it's where if you get Tanaka, if you help Tanaka survive and he's trained with Marco and he gets to the tower, um, he'll fight he can fight August there. And August just bodies him, right? Because he's because he's August. Um The whole point of that scene was that August was finally and it's on like day three or something like that, and August is finally like, well, I I'm not He's starting to think that he can't achieve his goal of finding and killing the Kaiser. And so he's like, well, if I don't start killing other contestants, then I'm just going to be dead anyway. So, you know, I may as well give them a swift death and get this over with. And I thought that that was, that was good, where he's, he's finally starting to break. He's finally, like, I, his goals are just yeah, out of his reach. That, he can't even I find like it. In day so three after him. Sorry. I like it so much more when he just um, commits suicide at his camp, and and the camp kind of suggests that he knows he's not supposed to be around other people because the moon is driving everybody crazy, you know. And I like it, it feels much more in character for him to, um, you know, to be like, oh, I I kind of understand what's at stake here, and I'm not gonna go out like a, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna become a bad guy or turn into a monster. I'll just you know peacefully go out at my camp. And that, that fits him so much better than, than just shooting some random uh, businessman. Maybe, maybe <laughs> if, like, if we are talking about lore in a way which I never talk about lore, is that maybe he killed himself because he killed Tanaka, the previous thing, because that's how it was in oh, a way. He, he, after, after he, kills he doesn't nah. kill Tanaka in that, in that scene, though, I don't think. Personally, I I'm a big sure. fan of what I happened. Tanaka is dead, of course. I think what happened in my playthrough is probably the... Uh, ideal way for it to go down with his story where at some point he just like despawns <laughs> <laughs> he was able to escape termina he just, yeah he escaped wow he just jumps over the for festival of termina and just walks away yeah but wait was he dead or He's just the power of climbing fences that's true yeah he he just despawned i didn't get a skill three at all no but uh, like uh, in the in the um, dream section you didn't see a cross on august no. Maybe August killed the Kaiser in your playthrough. Who knows? Ooh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then just the game. He won. Yeah. <laughs> also, I want to circle back to something Worm Girl said, where only Pav and Caligura act like they're in a uh, battle royale. And I'd like to ask for a counterpoint. Mm. Maybe they're just assholes and that's how they act all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's certainly possible. I think that's... To be honest. Well, I guess, yeah. Pav I think it's... Is, yeah. Uh, the, was the left hand of uh, Kaiser. I well, think it would be weirder if two people took the dream seriously instead of zero people when there's 12 people who don't. So, so I'm just going to so assume he... the Battle Royale thing is just like a hook at the start to get the player invested and they bait and switch into something completely unrelated. Hmm. No, Pop I think it's... Some... Oh, yeah. Pop has some dialogue where he um, he brings up the dream and he's like, oh, you know, we're all going to have to kill each other anyway. I just want to accomplish my mission before then. Um, and that's kind of why he he's so resigned about everything. But Caligura never says anything. Um, he just acts irritable. If you have mind reading, he just... His mind reading is exactly the things he says out loud. It is. And, uh, <laughs> So it's possible he's just like crawling around in the sewer and beating people to death all day long, and that's just his life. Well, he is but a mobster. To be honest, so. be honest uh, there is one thing that makes me think Caligura is, is a, a quote unquote uh, a best star, okay? Because uh, just one uh, thing. When you have this just one thing scene, makes you think that. 
Just one no, thing. No, no, no. <laughs> let, let me let me <laughs> let me elaborate. Let me elaborate more. When you get the uh, dream, the not the dream, sorry, the sleep sequence with Marco in the Mayor's Manor with uh, Caligula. Mm. Uh, Caligula, uh, if you of course you already know, if you choose certain options, Caligula will not attack you. Caligula will just. Uh, go away. Mm. So, I think Caligura, like, it's not from the moment in which they arrived there, Caligura thought, okay, I'm gonna kill everyone. No. He he first is trying to understand what is happening, and then decides, oh, okay, we have to do this, and, and, and tries to kill everyone. But I think so... at the start, and even for Pav, I think it was the same. I don't know, I don't think Pav, uh, at the very start, uh, wanted to actually kill everyone. But then, of course, after a while, he said just, uh, yeah, okay, all right, let's go with it. That's true. If Pav wanted to kill everybody from the start, he'd fight you right outside the bunker when he's got the drop on you. Yeah, and exactly. it'd be really easy to kill you there. And... Yeah, yeah, so well, it's just um... zero out of 14 people take the whole battle royale thing seriously. Hmm. And Henry. according to ending A, it really doesn't matter. So why don't just yeah. even remove the battle royale component no, at that point? No, but Jones, Jones, that's what I meant. No one at the start takes the battle royale seriously. They all take some time to take it seriously. Like, for example, Henrik does it uh, by poisoning you very late in the game. And there are some characters that never take it seriously, like Levi, like uh, Marina, like Abel, I think, also. But, uh, I mean... Lucky, uh, I, I'm happy that at least there is someone sane in the, in the festival, at least that tries uh, other solutions. But um, I disagree when you say that um, there, are, there aren't a lot of people that are taking it seriously because everyone needs their time before, uh, like, uh, uh, processing what is happening and uh, um, acting in the consequences. Um, so there is some dialogue with Levi. If you um, if you encounter him in Caligura and you kill Caligura and then you uh, follow Levi to the school and talk to him there, um, he has some dialogue about, like, Hey, you felt something when you killed him, didn't you? And um or no no, he he says something about um uh a man was telling us to kill people and then you can tell him like, yeah, and I felt something weird when I killed him, like because you get his soul. Uh and it, it kind of makes it seem like Levi is just no matter what, he would not turn into a person who he's he's done with violence until he moon scorches. Like he's he's, he's it seems like he's not really capable of hurting people. Mm. Yeah. Um, Doesn't... So there's... Raccoon, isn't there a point where Levi just, like, shoots people around the orphanage? He turns into... <laughs> when he moon scorches, he... He um... actually does, in, in a way. That's, that's really weird that he didn't kill anybody there. He ended up just finding a room to stay there without having to kill anything, because every single orphan is still alive, even when he moon scorches. And he kind of just wants, it yeah. really seems like he wants to be left alone more than he wants to kill people. Like, he keeps running away. Yeah, I think he's torn. I, I, my, my head canon is that he went back to the school to kill Domek, and, but I don't think he would have been able to go through with it. Mm. Um, I, I think he's, he's torn, because he, if you talk to him, he says he doesn't know, he didn't have anywhere else to go, and he didn't know, you know, what he was doing, and he was just kind of following his feet. Um, but if you're playing as him, when you get back to the orphanage, he's he's like disgusted by the place. He's having these weird memories of the nuns and the, you know, they're wearing this flowery perfume and the 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 memory is like making him all weirded out. And, um, uh, you know, when you solve the um, or when you fail to solve the hangman riddle, uh, there's a apparition of Father Domek hanged in the in the schoolyard. And um so yeah, my head cannon, you know, you have a like a 18, 19 year old man coming home and and going to a uh, a school with a gun, you know, it conjures a certain image, but uh, <laughs> I, I think he's unable to go through with um yeah. Uh with it for the same reason that he was, you know, so traumatized by the place. Um you know what's funny? What's that? Uh, we've been talking for like 40 minutes. I think we still didn't answer a single question from the viewers. So. No, no, we haven't. Um, I, I did have one point about the Battle Royale feeling a bit tacked on with in regards to the characters. Um, I think that's, that's, probably, that's probably on purpose um, because the whole Battle Royale is tacked on by the Sulphur Cult to, to Rare's festival. So it's not even supposed to be there. Right, it is. It is a um. It is a ruse. That's mm. true. So that's why the whole thing feels 
feels tacked on because it is. <laughs> um, I wanted to be like evolve into it. I already gave Miro a lot of ideas when it comes to how I want changes. I don't give him ideas. I just be demand able to things. More. <laughs> well, I give ideas because I don't demand things. <laughs> I just want stuff to change around so it makes it more, you know, scary for us to recruit people so willingly. Like, there has to be some negative from you just recruiting a Vela so early. Yeah, well, there, there was, was a... a backstab, um, there was a... Something when I made my video on Termina, a lot of people were like, why did you... Um, why did you do so much... Uh, in-depth story about the ending A route, and then for the B and C, you didn't really say much uh, about the like the routes themselves. And it's like because there's no there's no real lead in. You just walk <laughs> up to people and murder them for no yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, so you know you can role play in your head that your guy is just completely completely bug nuts. But it's like I would like more events that kind of justify. Yeah, and there's a little bit of it, like with Marco on the train, uh, where he's starting to have like a nervous breakdown on day three. Um, he doesn't like get violent or anything, but he's he's like, you know, um, you can tell he's he's kind of going through it in his head. And it'd be great just to see more more little one-off events that would kind of prompt the player to think one way or the other. Like that scene with August and Karen is really good because mm. it makes you think like. Oh, maybe August is a bad guy. Or even if I know that he's not, maybe my character would think that he's bad. Mm. Because these games, um, to bring up role-playing again, um, these games have your character be silent, and they're pretty sparse on dialogue in general because uh, Mudo's expecting the player to fill in the blanks a lot. So, especially the first game. You know what would actually really help that feeling? Would be... Um... Like like the miasma cutscenes from the uh, battles from the first game, where your allies attack yeah. you as the day goes on, as the days go on. Mm -hmm. You know, on may you know maybe it's at low sanity they have a chance to attack you. Uh, maybe it's you know at certain certain story yeah. points certain people will attack you. Um, yeah, oh. I like that part of like having Ragnarok with um, how the fuck Ragnarok with hi, hi, how is it called? Fuck the guard. There you go. <laughs> In the party, you know what what happens if you get to a certain point. So I want right. that kind of stuff in Germany. Yeah, and, it. yeah, that'd and, be pretty sweet. And that way, it's you wouldn't know if your um your allies would actually turn on you, and you're sort of like really nervous. And that's what you should be feeling. It's a battle royale where everyone's gonna get, everyone's gonna kill each yeah. other. It's like, is this guy gonna turn on you me know, when I go around the corner? That would be a really good way to implement that. Mm. A random chance of other party members attacking oh. you while you sleep. <laughs> No, 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 With the no, second no, no. that said a random chance, everyone was like, oh, this no, guy. <laughs> no, I can, I can explain you why. Yeah, I, I hate you, Jones, but uh, the point is, uh, like, when you attack another contestant with other contestants in your party, they will never attack him unless they have attacked first. This already invalidates the possibility of them attacking you in the sleep because they don't want to kill. I know you may say with the, the time passing, they are going to try to attack you, but if it's random, it may happen on freaking day one. Well, it could be well, deterministic in a way that seems random to the player. So yeah, just there, there could be like a... flags that you trip so that once mm. you know the routes, you can you can get all kinds of things to happen. Okay, <laughs> roll a d70 and then subtract sanity from it. And if the result is less than zero, then uh, you get an actual fight. Done. Mm. No, yeah, it could be no. stuff like if Levi's in your party <laughs> and you clear out the orphanage and you do that stuff there... Then, you know, it's like, oh, Levi's realized that this whole thing is much worse than he expected. And so now he has a he has a chance to kill you or a chance to fight you. And you, you can like do stuff like the, that. Or imagine if, the, um, oh, sorry. imagine if you take him, if uh, you go there as Marina and, um, you know, he figures out that that she's uh, she's Domek's daughter, you know, mm. and like, hey, like that's suddenly like this big wedge that should be driving these two characters apart. Uh, and it never really comes up, but it's a, it's an interesting <laughs> yeah. thought that would, I think, create a lot more fan fiction. Yeah. Those are like fan fiction. Levi Marina uh, ships dead so, in the water. Mm, or maybe even so, stronger than before. No, no, it would stronger than ever. Because <laughs> no. now, they're, now they're on opposite shores. They're, they're, you know, they're from different sides of the tracks. He's a, ah, what do they call that? Uh, uh, enemies to lovers, the, they call that, don't they? Let's go. Yeah. Raccoon. Uh, <laughs> 
Why are you against uh, Marina with uh, Levi? We went through this. I don't want to talk about it again. Now, like let's talk about more. this. You're an anti, <laughs> Raccoon? Uh, you're an anti? Wow, I can't believe you have an anti. Listen to me, okay? Hey, I'm an anti. I'm anti fan fiction. I'm anti shipping. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you, Jones. No. Thank you, Jones. But fan fictions are part of the fandom, they, they give a vitality to the fandom. They are not always uh, the most same part, okay? But, uh, listen, yeah. okay? You give me yeah. vitality. Uh, thanks. Is this Raccoon X for okay, I was going to say wow. something about... I was saying <laughs> something about Levi going back into the orphanage. Maybe Levi doesn't want to go into the rare dimension because he doesn't feel good about it. So when you force him to go there, you got a, a coin toss. So if you mess up, he becomes most coach or he no. goes against you. Oh, no. for. So coin you can or either wait outside, like make him wait outside the rare dimension. So you can actually drop a person there. Which is something you cannot do in Hunger Terminal without going into, you know, the base. You can drop Levi there for later. And that would be really good, to be honest, in my opinion. Just to, like, force a character to go through a traumatic experience. Because Levi cannot just be like, okay, let's go in. No, yeah. Raccoon, it doesn't make sense. Raccoon, you just gave me the best worst idea for Termina. Oh, no. Tell me. I'm all ears. When you try to save with someone in your party under 50 mind... You get a coin flip prompt. <laughs> no. Oh. Okay, 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 I'm listening. And if you fail the coin flip, they either leave the party or attack you. But you know how we can make this even better? If you make it mm -hmm. correctly, there is another coin flip. How so? No, if you make it, if you guess it, you have to do it again. And if you fail, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's not <coughs> How about no. how about this, right? It's, it's already it's back already, to the uh... saving coin flip, but like <laughs> not all the way, and in a way that like instantly creates this horrible sense of trauma and dread in the players when they're mm. playing Termina and get that. Mm. That would actually that would actually really it's, help balance yeah. um, just mm -hmm. stacking a party and then steamrolling everything. Yeah, you can leave your party back at home while you sleep at that bed outside far away yeah okay. it would actually be worth going yeah, back so to the train and dropping them off for a while then yeah i think if your mind is under know. like 20 when you sleep you should coin flip and if you fail then you just moon scorch on the spot i think that'd be a great feature but 50 is enough for someone to want to you know do the skill ability so maybe 50 might be enough i think under 50 mind okay under 30 minus yeah <laughs> if you want to make you make it harder okay <laughs> Make coin flips, but Obviously. worse. He does instantly lose. So one, of the, <laughs> one of the uh, one of the prompts uh, that we got uh, was people asking about mods, wasn't it, Mal? Yes, yes, it was. Um... And I think if 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 you're modding out there, and uh, I think that would be incredible, would be to add in, uh, you know, some kind of a chance for confrontation at. Um, at low mind if you try to sleep with your party in yeah that seems like the simplest way to, to add it in right rather than adding like all these different triggers which, which could be pretty complex but yeah which just if they're under, under 50 going, mind, then. which mods are still going for them i mean i don't remember any other than oh yeah so so one of the I questions we got was now. when eventual mods are added to fear and hunger termina what would you like what do you think would be most common is the actual question but we can talk about mods in general most common well common. uh there's one here that i can see it's thicker per kill which makes per kill thicker <laughs> exactly. that's, to this that's just mandatory though you know we we're all thinking it we're like you know what i like this game but percolate <laughs> you know we can do a little more yeah that's oh. more or less what i was actually going to suggest is most popular <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Can you put this image in the podcast, Mal? Please put this image. <laughs> like, as a general <laughs> rule, the most popular mods are all lewd in nature. That's actually amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I think the like if, if we get a good mod development, I think the, the next mod they could make was actually releasing Miasma to the public. Like, there is literally the Miasma in the code. You just have to make it so that when you cut it off of Moonless, you get it. Oh. I think uh, I think 
I think the only reason that it's not like in the game is that uh, he didn't feel like writing events for it and and sprites for it for all the characters. Mm, yeah, yeah probably. you know, you know what that would combo really well with the other ideas we were having. Um, you know how we were talking about the the party members. You know, after certain triggers, they attack you. If they have miasma, that is always always attack you. They need like less triggers to attack. Yeah, but please uh, make it so that Miasma has to be equipped to someone. Because if you can just keep it in the inventory, nothing is gonna happen. What do you mean, like it binds to a player? That sounds so awesome to be honest. Yeah, but, uh, the, but the I, raccoon, I can see, I can see it. Raccoon, in the first game, Miasma has so much potential. <laughs> also, the Miasma fights are bugged, and they just cause you to turn the screen black. But still. It still remains that uh, I think Miasma should be more of a man -ass. Like, uh, is it man -ass? Yeah. Ma man ass? What man ass? What? <laughs> I <laughs> like <laughs> the idea of it man -ass the equipment slot. <laughs> the moment someone equips Miasma, they never unequip it. Um, it is supposed I to be curse, isn't it? I never equip Miasma because so I don't know the trigger, so I'm usually scared of it. And I usually just forget about it before I post, so I don't know. I think it works yeah. well. Miasma is the easiest thing in the world to manage in the first game, which is why I would love in the second game to actually have a, you know, uh, a Miasma with stronger will. Like, a Miasma that is able to influence you more. Miasma that talks. Make Miasma like, uh, Nashra. Yeah, Miasma make, it, does make talk. it change your sprite into something really cool. Like, not your sprite, your, um, your portrait. Mmm. Like, like, shadows swirling around you. Because Miasma yeah. has, like, oh, the man. poison Imagine... mist? Uh, imagine new bad. portraits where he has to account for every single combination of every single face carving and every uh... single combination of face carving multiplied by number of limbs remaining. <clears throat> oh, well, you'll be pleased to note that there are new facial portraits coming and it there will have to really account for all of that, so. Hug your ears, Listen, Listen Mom, well, it's the first uh, game yeah, you have sorry, a... I shouldn't talk about this. <laughs> well, it's, it's, we don't know what it is yet. It's just, there's... Okay. I think it's moon scorching. That's what it looks like, but we honestly have no idea. Aww. It looks like Levi ate a bee. Is basically what it is. He ate a bee, so his face is kind of puffy. <laughs> it, it, it's possible he can survive the um, the uh, Caligura attack. That was the other oh. idea that people seem to have. Now that would be interesting. Or maybe the beehive. Maybe the beehive is a special attack in which they, he, he puts bees instead of you or something. <laughs> I, I, like, a, imagine a whole... Maybe uh, it's a uh, side effect of bees. using the devour skill on the beehive. <laughs> <laughs> status effect, A to B. <laughs> he's, uh, he's this guy in chat now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we also saw Black Caleb with a similar thing ages ago. And I thought it was like... Because he had an Ormir carving on his face, I thought it was like part of like Black Caleb questline, but um, it's it's sort of the same as what Levi's got. So who knows what the hell it is? Can Black Caleb even be Black Caleb? <laughs> I want Black Caleb to be relevant to the story and not a sacrifice. I, I, want, I want Black Caleb to upgrade his uh, headbutt the more carrots you feed him. I want Ooh. Black Caleb to be able to be obtainable without you know having to give up on the pinecone pig. You know what I want, actually? I want to be able to pick up Black Caleb with a skill and throw it at an enemy. Like I would throw <laughs> Olivia as Marco towards <gasps> an enemy. Oh, 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 Olivia should be able to ride Black Caleb without a wheelchair. And it gives her, like, like a stronger the, uh... attack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like that one girl's prank. Oh, oh my god. Exactly, is. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we nice. I will now uh, buy your game, Miro. If you do this, I'll now buy your game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other mods? Well, I th I, th I do think the actual most popular mod is definitely that 99 uh, Book of Enlightenment mod. People have that in like the yeah. first, like the first week the game came out. Someone's like, here you go. Infinite Enlightenment. <laughs> I keep hearing people say, oh, I have to use this because there's no save on quit in this game. And I, I am really confused by people because a run, like a, a completed run of this game is maybe five hours long. And if you need to like go to sleep or go to work or something, you can just like minimize it. It doesn't, 
Mm. I, I don't get the, like the dire need for a safe. I mean, it would be nice if one existed, but hey, it's, warm I girl. Just don't like, uh, you never wow, really wow. Just way to there. out your sh self as a shut in. Holy. <laughs> or girls, you never click like hunger one. If you leave it open, uh, there is the possibility the screen freezes forever and, until you reset. <laughs> I've, I've it's never, only I've never five hours sitting down in front of I, my I PC. I guess it just, it's just it's weird to have a computer <laughs> on the whole night for some people. Maybe there is a yeah. mod that makes it so you can actually leave and then have your game saved, though. Yeah, save recently. on quit would be a good Without feature. Um, yeah, there is one. There is one. Uh, it's yeah, called. Oh, not look it up. I used to use it like all the time when I was doing insane challenge runs and only had like two hours to stream a day. But but I mean, you also, uh, you know, that aside, you still have the guaranteed uh, eight saves and then, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're going to find uh, almost certainly if you're in Hunger Bible. And so that's what, three more saves and then you get. Um... Speak for yourself about the fear and hunger Bible, because I never found one of those. What do you mean? You the, can the, trade the yeah, contestant's heads for Pocket Guaranteed Cat, one from Pocket Cat, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, if you kill the thing that I didn't do is I killed forever, Pocket Cat. Apollo. No! What do you mean you killed Pocket Cat? <laughs> if you kill Dan, Pocket Cat is gone forever. Yeah, you that's know. true. Yeah. Oh, oh, you killed Dan, not Pocket. Okay. Yeah, okay. also, okay. the mod that can actually like, let you save and leave the game and then come back into it is called Premonitions mod. Mm -hmm. Do they add, uh, add Premonitions as well? Glitches, sadly. Yeah, the way, the yeah, I agree with Warm Girl. I think the suspend option is something that I considered only in the hard mode of Fear and Hunger 1 and only in there. Because in there, like, you know, you can't save. So uh, a way to suspend the game and come back later, it's sure, kind sure. of interesting. But uh, when you have, uh, like, si 16 ways to save, uh, I think uh, it can also be avoided. I, I think people are, are really what they are trying... I think the real complaint is that people are afraid to not have a perfect run, and that is what um, Miro has said that he's trying to get rid of with um, that he's trying to go after with with these new updates. Mm. Um, because in in like almost every run of Fear and Hunger One, uh, something bad happened before I got to the end of the game. Like I lost a limb, or I had to do a marriage, or I had to um, like Moonless died in a fight or something, and I, I just had to keep going. You can see in my um, in my video at one point i'm it, I, like right after i defeat francois like moonless is just like quietly dead <laughs> <laughs> Poor moonless. and and that was cool because like it really made the ending feel like you you really had to fight tooth and nail to get there uh whereas yeah. in termina if you lose a limb you can just kind of like reload because you have so many saves and you have you know, so many items, and it's it's kind of easy to avoid losing a limb once you know what you're doing. It is. It is a lot easier than the first game, but that being said, Termina is still really, really hard compared to normal games. And a lot of people find it really oh. tedious um, when, they're, when they're playing for the first time, because it is a very... It's, it's a game about memorizing a lot of stuff, um, and yeah, people just get annoyed I with have it. a problem with... <laughs> I have a problem with the way people use the word tedious in, in game criticism. A lot of games are about the tedium. Uh, and especially with, with Fear and Hunger Termina, the game is about uh, crawling through the mud. And, you know, let's say like the first time you get to the mayor's mansion, that's, that's if you're new to the game, that might take you a couple of hours to figure out that route. Mm. Uh, and, oh, it's, it's so tedious having to fight the villagers over and over again. And it's so tedious having to go... That's the point of the game. Like, if you if you take away that, there's no game. Yeah. You, know, you may as well just skip to the end. Uh, I'd, I'd like to offer a counterpoint in that you can make that whole process dramatically less tedious by just, like, cutting out the obnoxiously long head song off animation. Uh, uh, you, oh, you, you, can, can, you can hold Z. You can speed it up by holding. Yeah, you can yeah. hold an enter and it speeds it up. I, I'm aware yeah. of that. It. I would rather oh, it was not there at all, <laughs> but because it, it doesn't really it add much after the first it. time. I, I like it. I think it has tension. I love it. I, I imagine someone unzipping their pants and then zipping them again over and over again. Why, why would you imagine that when yeah. someone's cutting off a head wrecking? That's another thing to say. They go, juki, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jones, uh, I, I actually talked about this in a recent video. I, uh, the Bonesaw animation in the first game of Fear and Hunger, like, made me literally emotionally scared of the game. Like, the, the sound, uh, I, I, I was uh, touching my neck, I was scared that someone was gonna sew off my head in that moment, uh, because I was sewing off a moonless leg, but uh, a moonless bow, but uh, it felt so real. So I think the long animation makes you 
uh, more immersed into the game. I know you may say the more you continue, the more uh, it may become a little bit less uh, uh, immersive. But I mean, you can say that about uh, a huge part of the of the games you can play. Yeah, yeah, the issue is that when I've heard it, like, five times in the past minute, because I'm collecting all the villagers head for the first set of levels, it loses all effect. That's when you use that point well, for, a, for a Zatadan, so... Yeah, no, I, I think it, it could stand to skip it, um, or to have, like, a, a faster skip or something. Um, uh, oh, you know what would be a nice, lot of enemies in the game. You know what would be really nice? A speedrun mode for your hunger. Mm. Where doubt animation and other animations they like quickly skip, yeah, from just happening. It's like automatically like holding an A button. Wait, but uh, yes. would that be usable for speedrunning? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe. There's a lot of things that come with speedrun mode, to be honest, that I've seen yeah. recently. Um, so I I think I that think um. Fear and hunger is sort of similar to Dark Souls in that you're supposed to learn the patterns and then learn what not to fight. And a lot oh of people. Oh no! Are... You just said that Fear and Hunger is just like Dark Souls. Yeah, Fear so... and Hunger is the Dark it's Souls true. of it's RPG Maker. The Dark Maker. Souls of RPG Maker. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but it, it is the, the whole mindset is that you have to learn what to do and what not to do. And yeah, you can get to the Mayor's Manor in like thirty seconds, but the first time you play, it'll take you a couple of hours. Um. No, no, I, I know what you mean, but uh, the one thing that I hear uh, a lot when I investigate between uh, what people dislike about Fear and Hunger is they say something like uh, Dark Souls uh, uh, requires a skill because uh, you have to understand the pattern, etc. Instead, Fear and Hunger is just a mishmash of uh, trying random inputs over and over again. Like, the difference between the two is uh, more that uh, Dark Souls uh, is uh, try and learn we may say, fear and hunger is try and die. <laughs> well, that's just ignorant. That it's, it's, is it's a like lot more forgiving. Say, it's like the people who say like, oh, the, the coin flips are just shitty gambling. And it's like, no, the coin yeah, flips exactly. only matter if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're there to make you feel like you're, you're in a lot more danger than you are because, you know, once you know how to play the game, you're never going to get, um, uh, you're never going to get, into a life or death situation with a coin flip attack unless you've made a mistake and uh, there are more than enough items even though you're flipping coins every time you open a chest. Or it's that one harvestman. <laughs> it was that one harvestman, one yeah. Harvestman. yeah. Oh, God damn, um, yeah. yeah, I think I think the issue here is that people don't expect to have to put that much time in to be able to enjoy a game before they can enjoy it. Um, and they're not sure if it's going to be valuable enough like, because it can be hard to tell if something's actually worth your time. Um. Well, and to be to be dubious, to like be circumspect is one thing, but like, I, I mean, I've like I've got my hour hour long video, and um, yeah, I got a comment the other day that was like, "Well, I like it when games require skill and not shitty gambling." And it's like, oh. if that's what you took from this video, then I I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah. One thing I gotta say though about like games that really don't, test you to the point of like. Don't take YouTube commenters seriously. <laughs> I don't. I, I I don't ever. But like, I they're mostly six-year-olds. No, 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 like, no, no. Like, don't what say prompted that. you to type this? <laughs> um, I, I do have like, I do have a brief aside. I saw a YouTube comment the other day, and um, they were t they were talking about playing a game on mobile. And I was like, uh -huh. why would you play Fear and Hunger? That must like set your set your phone on fire doing that. Why would you play Fear and Hunger on mobile? <laughs> There's a lot of people who play on phone, by the way, in my audience. A lot of them. Yeah, even in my audience. I just, it was but, just um, caught me off guard. It's unbelievable. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Games that usually test you, for me, stay with me for a long time. A yeah. long time. Yeah. But, That's why uh, you this know... one has been sitting with me for so long. I think when someone mentions something like that in the comments, like uh, when they say, uh, I, not, I, I like games that actually have uh, these instead of uh, just these stupid mishmash of things that I don't like, that. Uh, like, on one side, yeah, they, what they're saying uh, probably is just because, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of experience in it. I still appreciate, though, that they are, uh, you know, commenting, because in that way, there is the possibility that someone answers to them, in case uh, the content creator sure. itself doesn't. But also, also, every content, every comment uh, boosts you in the algorithm. Yeah, 
They'll yeah, say yeah, viewers, make sure to comment down below. Uh, comment, uh, what should they comment today? Um, that warm girl sounds um, like she's dying. Comment their favorite <laughs> aspect of my personality and how wonderful a person I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? Comment the worst take you heard from someone about fear and hunger. Yeah, yeah. What's the worst fear yeah. and hunger take you've heard? That's good. I like that. And boost us in the algo, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> that said, I have to dip because I've got a bunch of stuff I got to take care of. All right, well, thanks right, for coming in, guys. Right. See you soon, then. With something yes. cursed. Uh huh. Oh, no! Oh, no! no. Oh. We've got Yassified Guard. What the <laughs> hell? Can I put these on, on the screen? Yeah, sure, go right ahead. You can do whatever you want with them. Wow. That's terrifying. <laughs> that guard. It's so cursed. Uh, so the, He's just um, a dude. The, the Gaunt Knight looks okay. I mean, he looks like AI art, which always looks bad. But, like... <laughs> the guard... <laughs> The guard is perfect. <laughs> he looks... How is he holding the cleave of arm? Wait a second. How is he holding the cleave of arm? Look Look his his <laughs> Why does he just have a normal man's head on the guard? <laughs> <laughs> exactly! <laughs> it's like Carl Pilkington, but like the rest of him is the guard. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well. Oh, get out of the dungeon. Carl, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying that's actually terrifying i know it's terrifying but for all the wrong reasons i know i'm gonna dip but all right see you, Bye. See you. by the way I, I wanted to add something to the discussion about the coin flip thing like the other uh i keep getting on uh on my coffin of Indian lele video uh comments about uh, about saying how the game is bad because uh, it uh, it just it's just a disguise for fetishes uh, etc and the thing i usually do is uh, i just tell to them did you watch the video or uh, i suggest you to watch uh, the video because like they already arrived here so if they watch the video and maybe it is able to give them another perspective there is a possibility for them to you know maybe trying to consider other possibilities because uh, I think one of the problems is sometimes, uh, and it's it's legitimate, people don't have the time to invest into something. I never watched One Piece, for example, because it's in infinite. It's like 10,000 episodes long, but, isn't it? Yeah, but if uh, I don't watch it, I cannot say One Piece is bad because of this uh, that I heard from my cousin that lives uh, in, uh, in uh, America. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, there's... So, I mean, have you ever been, like, angry and you, like, you know, broke something or, or said something you didn't, you know, you shouldn't have, you knew you shouldn't have said, but it just no. felt good to do it in the moment? No, mm, you've never been angry. No. Sometimes, sometimes. Never said, you've never said something mean that you, you regretted later? No. Um, yeah, I always do. It's, so, I mean, I think that there's this really strong impulse people have to, to follow through on an emotional impulse, uh, and it feels good to do it in the moment. And the internet, especially with social media, like really, really, really baits you into wanting to do that. And it'll, you'll see a post that like pre con, like it aligns with one of your, um, your pre existing prejudices in your head, like that, you know, everybody has these. And you agree with the post, and it would feel good to pile on because that's just human nature. And, it doesn't feel good to like investigate something that you're pretty sure you're not going to like mm. and learn about it, especially in a world where so many things are, are set up in a deceitful way, you know, to promote, you know, bad things. And so people just get stuck on this, this like moralizing kind of, um, they do it with fear and hunger too, but I think not as much because, uh, I think the fan base got out ahead of the, the the outsiders like by the time the general public was made aware of this game there was already a thriving fan base mm. whereas i think with andy and Laylee, um it didn't benefit from that as much yeah uh your video on it was was spot on i really loved your um your breakdown at the end oh you watched it yeah oh thanks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you see that that's that's the point. Like uh, 
I, I think a lot of people, you, you can dislike the game, etc. I, I did this discussion too many times, actually. You know what? Continue, continue. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, and not everything deserves your time, but I think I think sometimes when, when everyone, a lot of people are saying like, hey, you know, slow down and think about this. I think it's good to sometimes take a look and see if you're mistaken. And you, you might not always be. You might be. You might be right, but sometimes you're wrong. You know, about the part in which you said uh, sometimes people act uh, emotionally angry or something. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, I got some comments in which they just said the game is completely bad because of this, this, this. I sometimes say just, uh, I disagree, but I respect your opinion. And then uh, they answer, I'm sorry if, uh, my, if my first message may have come out uh, as uh, angry or something. So, like, uh, they at least uh, understand that maybe uh, they were just acting a little bit emotionally. <laughs> so, like, that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm already happy to 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 see that it and is, then the healing can be done yeah it is funny you can completely disarm people like that where there's raging at you and you're just like oh yeah and you just reply calmly and they're like oh yeah no actually we can have a discussion <laughs> about this <laughs> um, but yeah it's it's that sort of they call that cognitive dissonance right where it's like you feel one way about something and then you see information about it that's actually completely different it's like oh it's, it's that old meme right where it's like uh uh the worst person you know just said something that was correct um mm -hmm. But yeah, people, it, it is... I mean, that makes sense. Um, I mean, you know, uh, I, I find myself doing this all the time, right? Where, you know, you feel one way about something and then you've got to really struggle to make yourself give it a chance. Um, I do it with, you know, ad thinking about fear and hunger theories. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you, you first see it and you go, no, that, that's actually pretty dumb. It doesn't make any sense compared to other stuff. And you think about it, it's like, oh, well, actually, it's not that bad. And then, you know, you gotta really you gotta really push yourself to do it. And I don't think a lot of people like doing that. I don't like doing it. But That was that was me with the Stab Marina ship. You know, I was like, no, she should stay away from her and she should go with Levi. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um what other questions did we have? Let's get one from the uh from the Google form. Wait, we're actually going for a question? That's crazy. we we answered yeah. one. We answered one. <laughs> one in uh, one hour. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, ratio. One That's a war record. Mm. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a nice one. Thoughts on Berserk? None. It, I don't know it. It's incredibly good. Everybody should watch Berserk 97 if they're not going to. If you're not going to do any other Berserk things, go watch. Um, or it's 98. Go watch the, the 90s Berserk anime. It was a TV series. It has one season. It's a great story. It's. it's uh, perfectly self-contained and if you like what you see you can just go pick up the manga from there or watch the movies and get more of the story um do not watch berserk 2016 but uh, uh wait to wait because uh, i have to interrupt you don't watch okay. berserk on the, uh, 2016 but i think there is uh, i don't remember if it's from that one or if it's from, if it's from the movies uh, but there is one particular uh, soundtrack you should listen to which is my brother berserk my brother my you brother. say yeah, it's the best soundtrack on planet. Hmm. Does uh, does Berserk ninety eight? What oh, yeah. what arc does that cover? Uh, it's it covers Golden Age. Oh, uh, it, it starts with a little bit of it starts with the Black Swordsman opening with the um, the Serpent Demon, and then it skips the um, the Duke. He's the oh. Duke, right? The Snail Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it skips that part, and then it goes to Golden Age. <laughs> um, it leaves out a couple of important scenes. Uh, uh, which I think, going back and reading through the manga, are some of the most beautiful scenes in the in the story. Um, hmm. uh, so, like certainly traumatic and upsetting, but there's there's some some really good stuff with with guts and Casca. Um, but what's there in the in the series is astonishing, and I think one of the things I was struck by going back to it um, last year was that uh, anime got so much worse in the two thousands. So it's like Berserk 97 or 90. I don't remember what year it was. Uh, the 90s Berserk is a really low budget anime uh, that was made by people who loved Berserk a whole lot and did a ton with a shoestring budget. And it looks great. It sounds great. Like everything about it just feels so perfect. And then when you get into the 2000s, anime gets into this... Um, transition to to digital art rather than than like hand-drawn cells and stuff 
and it just looks so much worse. And I think only in the last few years, the industry has recovered from that change. Yeah, it did take a little while for us to stock any ones that looked really good again, didn't it? And it's not to say there wasn't good anime in the 2000s. I'm just saying, like, the there was a lot lost in the transition away from traditional media. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think Golden Age is one of the. Uh, it's it's been a minute since I've read it now, so I don't remember a lot of the specifics. But I, I do remember thinking that Golden Age is one of the best pieces of media I've ever read. It's so good. It's so good. I was I was very sad when uh, when Miura Sensei hey, died. Hi there. Oh no no the the, the artist I'm, I said the oh, artist. Oh sorry. Yeah no 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 spoilers <laughs> on, on real life death place. Haven't got up to that part yet. Yeah. But yeah, so you haven't read it, Raccoon? Or watched it or anything? Read it? I do have read it, yeah, why? <clears throat> what you do? You have read yes. Berserk? I have not read Berserk, no. Ah. But, but we, okay, we so that's homework. I Next do week, have read it. You need to have read the... all 300 I have volumes. The... Of <laughs> well, I have the... I have an account in Reddit. Is that what no, not Reddit. No, not Reddit. Reddit is in no, this in this research. podcast. Get out, get out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have read Gans. If it's like Berserk, what's Gans? Yeah, it is definitely like Berserk. Is it? So I'm gonna like Berserk in the future. Then? Yeah, it's like uh, Gans is like Dark Souls, right? Is it? No, I don't think so. No. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a survival game, I believe. Gans. No, no, it is like Dark Souls. Trust me. How is it like Dark Souls? Tell us, Revolu, because, it's, uh, because it's difficult to like Dark Souls, uh, clearly. <laughs> How is it difficult? <laughs> Tell me, what are you doing in Gantz? <clears throat> in Gantz, you have to... No, I did, uh, I did uh, read Gantz. Uh, not finished, but I did read it. Like, uh, the one in which uh, every time they have to listen to the ball to kill aliens, etc. I did, I did uh, read it. Okay, okay, good. You know about the ball. Yeah, yeah, I know about the ball. Is, <laughs> is Gantz the one that's set in, like, the Dyson Sphere? What's that one? Oh, that's Blame. Blame. <clears throat> Gantz is a story about characters who died in the previous life and they're sent to talk to this one ball that tells them that there's going to be a threat in the place where they're in and they got to take it out before a certain time. So what is it like? Fight? If they don't take it out in like two hours, uh, the enemy or the monster, the alien, ends up arriving at, uh, you know, the Earth and then they have to fight in real life. Sounds confusing. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hmm. Um, okay, next question is... Um, this one's a little long one. Um, not as long as the other one from the other day. Um, my theory is, Logic replacing Rare as a new god of truth. When Logic is turned on, the Termina Festival ends, and Perkley left standing there like a twonk, because Logic has taken over Rare's domain. Logic can pull people into Rare's realm, and I think it makes sense thematically where an artificial machine god takes over the position of a trickster god during the modern age. Also, thanks for making this podcast. You are talented folk indeed. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. So, what do you reckon? Did Logic take over Rare's position as god of truth? I, my theory here is that Logic took over for all the gods. And, um, you know, she's got the, um, she's got the Venushka symbol negated on her. And we see that the 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 tunnels like kill all the plant life around them. Uh, specifically, you can you can see this in the um, in the deep woods around that one. There's like a very clear delineation of of a circle of of death around the um, the tunnel. Oh, that's interesting. But uh, I I think the old gods are are like all gone. Um, you know, rare is the last. Like rare's traces are like the last thing that's around, and and um, uh, Parcala says, you know, those are gone now too. Uh, so I, I think logic is 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 creating a, a new paradigm where the old none of the old gods exist, and so is doing some of the work of all of them. So we see logic has a creation and a destruction hand. Uh, and that's partly because Venushka embodies both creation and destruction. But if you have creation and destruction, you don't need Grogoroth or Sylvian. Mm. And it may be that, that they departed around the time that Venushka was born because, uh, you know, people began to understand that nature was responsible for, for life and death and not, you know, not some 
gods. And the, so there may be just this progression of, of human understanding of the universe. And when we get to the point where logic exists, I think all the other old gods are, are pushed out or have already exited the stage. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it comes back. To, it's a bit cyclical because it comes back to the thing where a metaphor and what's literally happening are the same thing in fear and hunger. Mm -hmm. Logic exists yeah. because the other old gods are gone, but the old gods are gone because logic exists. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, and you know the gods exist outside of time, so all of this stuff can be true and false at the same time. Mm, absolutely. And it, it it does get a bit confusing to explain sometimes, though, or even understand. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely agree that I think that logic is replacing the whole system. I think that, so there, there's, there's like three different parts to logic. There's the artificial green hue, there's the monolith, which is uh, Ryla, and then there is the teleelectroscopes. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that Ryla, the, the monolith, is equivalent to the sun god or the king of the gods. And then the artificial yeah. green hue is basically made, it's, it's made an artificial system of gods completely. So it's like, yeah. Lagarde took a look at the green hue, was like, that's cool, but I want to do my own thing. And then he made that. And so it's sort of like a copy, or but different. We, we don't know exactly how, mm -hmm. how different it is yet. Um, but yeah, so it's, he's basically made, made his own copy of how the gods work entirely. We'll, we'll see. So we'll my, see what the differences are in in the third game, right? But for now, it seems like that's what okay. he's done. And I have a theory about the um, the green hue. I think that there's a there was already an existing cycle of of death and not necessarily rebirth, but like new life. You know, that's described with Sylvian and Grogroth. And I think what logic is doing is creating a closed system where when human souls die, they go because uh, Lagarde says this. He says um, Kaiser says, you know. I hate to do this, but I have to kill you. But don't worry, you'll be the first people to enter into the the new afterlife. Mm. You know, I'll lay your bodies to rest uh, myself. And so I think what what he, what they've done is they've made a system where human souls now go into the artificial green and then are reborn into the world from there. Uh, and so the old system gets shut out, and like so, humanity kind of creates this. Um, yeah, like this closed divine system that the old gods no longer have like a part in. Uh, so I think in the next game, like people aren't going to know who any of the old gods are at all, uh, except maybe Sulphur. That, that's my guess, but obviously I don't know any better than anybody else. But Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the old gods are completely all forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the funny thing is I've been looking into it a lot and there's no mentions of an afterlife other than the sulfur pits and the sulfur pits are only mentioned like twice um so it it does yeah. look like in the first game it's it's souls walking through mahab and then getting fed into the grand hall of the new gods probably to keep them going i think that's probably what the system was that the old gods set up but other than that there's like uh, no mentions of an afterlife at all yeah donovan says that souls are eternal and are constantly reborn even simultaneously, which uh, makes it sound like like every version of the endless soul is the same single soul, just kind of like uh, it's able to be in multiple places at once because it's a divine object. So, so I, I wonder if the souls are sort of like like the old gods, how they're they're in the green hue but they reach out. So I wonder if that's how the souls work too. The like primordial ideas yeah, I, that instantiate themselves in humans. Right. So, so you know, Kahara and Nilvan and and Karen are different people, but they they share the same soul. And um, you know, when Kahara and Karen die, you know that that individuality is lost, but the the part is preserved in the the kind of indelible uh, soul of the endless. So I've been I've been thinking about what um, about astrology in uh in fear and hunger because you've got the references to the the old gods as aliens coming down in the old in, in the museum there's there's uh i think it's a statue from abyssonia how they talk that's about from the song the empire yeah yeah that's the one um and how it talks about how the old gods are actually aliens that came down from the stars and there's lots mm -hmm. there's a lot of references to to stars and astrology in in termina um 
And a big emphasis on the sun god, which, of course, is just one, one star. This is really close, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and of course, you've got souls as star signs as well. Like, they're explicitly... Um, they're explicitly compared to, uh, I think, I think the star signs or astronomical signs or something in the in the first game. Yeah, Henrik. Henrik says so in the first game. I don't know if it comes up, but I know that Henrik explicitly says my zodiac is the the suffocated soul. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but in there's a book that mentions it right next to the first hexen table. It says that oh. souls are the same as star signs or something like that. It also says that the way the Hexen works. Did I discuss this last time I was here? Uh, maybe, but do it again. It's fun. It says the way that the Hexen works is that you are inheriting skills from the new god who shares your soul. Yes, that's right. It so does. That's why you can quickly learn skills at a Hexen table that you have spent no time practicing because mm. you... Uh, oh, right. And this was key to the um, the Tainted One being, uh, being Dars. Yes. And and that's why there's no dominating soul in the second game, because she was tainted somehow. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I wonder if... I wonder if it's kind of like... You, the green hue might be kind of like... Uh, what, what do they call it? Where the the whole sky was filled with light, and then, the, and then there was a dome over the top, and the stars were like holes where the light would oh, shine the through. Yes, oh, the firmament. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're... Yeah, the firmament, yeah. So I'm wondering if the green it's, hue is, is it, kind it, of an idea like that. It definitely makes me think of, like, Livestream from Final Fantasy. Yeah. Maybe not, like, physically there's, like, a physical dome up in the sky, right? But Right, right. But so something metaphorical like that. I do feel like there's sort of, sort of, like, a scale that goes from, like, green hue on one end, and the other end is, like, the darkness, which is, you know, as far away from the green hue as you can get, and then Earth is somewhere in the middle, or human reality is in the middle between the two. Right, right. But the cosmology and of this is sort of the, um, making me tear my hair out. Every time I, I come up with something, I, I come up with a counterexample. So <laughs> well, and what I love is, uh, is Mito has been like, oh, no, there's all kinds of gods in the world. We just know about these ones because, like, these are the ones relevant to the game. But yeah. no, there's there's dozens or hundreds, and it's like, oh, boy. Yeah, and then it's like, and then you've got people who are specifically muddying the waters. Like, the new gods are like, no, no, we're, the fellowship are like, no, we're, we're stronger than the old gods. And then it's like, what? Right. You know, these people, you know, we find out, oh, there's gods over here. What kind of god is that? What's Yegegetsu? Is it an old god? Is it a new god? Is it like a demon spirit? Mm. Is it like, what is it? <laughs> and we'll never know. Mira's never going to fucking tell us. <laughs> no, I don't think so. In fact, um, he has he has teased that the, the next game, uh, he said he would either set it in, in modern day or he would make it uh, a prequel. And if he makes it a prequel, I'm... I'm just gonna go kill myself. <laughs> just... <laughs> We're never gonna find out what. No, actually, actually, we will find out what logic does because logic is now outside of time, so it will still be That's a logic true, game. Yeah, it will just be yeah. a prequel. That would be sick. The Soul Sith, the Hexen, is logic reaching back in time to instantiate itself. Boom, done. Why does logic symbol look like the 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 seal of warding and the the talisman that Enki starts with? And it also looks like an old god symbol. There's a confirmed old god symbol that is very similar to that. Oh, that's true, yeah. And uh, the description of of the talisman Enki starts with that has the um, that kind of eye-looking thing on it oh, that looks like logic. Uh, uh, eye says protection, it I think. Through all the fear and hunger. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Oh, logic's oh, going to go back in time, aren't they? Going to go back back to the start of prehistory. Did then... you ever play Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross? No. I have so played Chrono Trigger, yes. So this essentially happens in Chrono Cross. Uh, so Chrono Trigger is a game about um, uh, a, a Lovecraftian god crashes into the prehistoric world, uh, kills off all the dinosaurs, and uplifts humanity, possibly by accident, and then uh, uh, millions of years later emerges from the ground um, kills all life on earth and uh pieces out cool and um and this is like just part of this this like lovecraftian gigantic entities uh like breeding cycle and it's it's essentially a god but it's treated like an animal it's it's really cool um but it's 
It's extremely like magically powerful. It's responsible for magic being in the world. And it also um, uh, leaves behind enough of itself to like corrupt a uh, uh, like a supercomputer system in the distant future. And in Chrono Cross, this becomes like a, a major antagonist for a while, which is this um, this like supercomputer that has like some some ability to manipulate time and uh, is imbued with like this, you know, the power of this basically an old god. It's it's really cool. And uh, I, I think Miro was probably heavily inspired. There's there's definitely a lot of Chrono Trigger in like the the plot with like the lizard men and the the blights. Um, because the stuff with the dinosaurs in Chrono Trigger is just really cool. I'm I'm positive Miro's mentioned it. I just did a quick search of his Twitter and I couldn't see it, but I'm, I'm positive he's mentioned Chrono Trigger before. Chrono Trigger is 20 hours long, and if you haven't played it, you owe it to yourself to just go knock it out. It's such a fun, cool game. Um, it's fun to play. It's good. Funny. It's Chrono, Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross? What's the difference? Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is one of the best jrpgs ever made chrono cross has one of the best jrpg soundtracks ever made and it's one of the best looking um playstation games ever made but uh its story is pretty incomprehensible and not in a good way <laughs> um it's just like jrpg nonsense incomprehensible kind of. stories well we wouldn't like that here we're, we're fear and hunger players but it's not it's not the good kind of incomprehensible it's just like the the just pulling stuff out of their ass like, it doesn't like hang together in a, in a good way but it, it's evocative um and you know if you really need more it's it's good and, and the soundtrack is second to none hmm. well um that kind of leads us to our next question uh what would termina be like if it was in modern day setting Like the original, the original what? teasers were. I think the original teasers combined with um, with Levi's story, which was like the first one written. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to say like, what would happen if you transported the game into modern day? I don't think it would be very different. Honestly, you know? no, not really. I don't think a, a crazy amount would change. I think the seeds of of like a modern day story that that you get with like the idea of Levi being this soldier who came home from war that's you know something a lot of um especially like millennials are are familiar with um I think and this this idea of like daily modern life having this undercurrent of like misery and evil underneath the surface in so many areas um I think it would be really cool. I think it would be a much more subtle game, uh, mm. if, which is why I'm I'm really hoping he goes for a um, he goes for a modern setting for the next one, and that it's uh, he does keep it subtle. I mean, I'd love it if there was, you know, almost no overt horror, and it was all like kind of under the surface stuff. Mm. I think what I think the only big change would be you'd have to. Um, you might have to change Levi from a soldier, but you could make him like a gamer and it'd be basically the same thing, right? Still have the same like <laughs> PTSD, um, substance abuse, you know, it wouldn't be that different. I, I think I think Caligura is the gamer of the group. <laughs> he is! <laughs> He's such a gamer. He's gross like a gamer. Stinks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stinky boy. <laughs> what do you guys reckon? Well, do, you, do you reckon the game would change much if we made it? in the the year 2000 instead of 1940 hmm. Hmm. Oh, uh, mm. uh, okay raccoon you go first you go first now nah, you go first i know you go first <laughs> God damn it. i don't really think it'll change much honestly okay now you go um we'll <laughs> change heavily to the point of being something that i don't like so maybe not really you reckon yeah. What, what would I change? I think the setting of when it is settled, it's pretty good. And I really don't want any changes. Because a futuristic setting will completely kill Final Hunger for me, sadly. So I don't want that ever. Even Why? though I will still support... I will still support Nero, even though he doesn't. I just I feel like Final Hunger 1 is still in a place where I'm like balancing between loving it and hating it because of how it's settled. So I mean, if it's just the exact place where I want it to be, 
And anything after that will be scary for me. I think. But wait, Termina why did you do res Oh, sorry. I was going to say, Termina's setting is brilliant. The World War II setting is really underused. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. um, it's it's pulled off really well. Uh, also, I just wanted to bring up the um, the Chizo Mythos by um, by Yahtzee, the uh, the game develop the game reviewer. Uh, uh, there's he made these uh, these four games called um, it was like Six Days a Stranger. Uh, what are the games called? They are some very lo-fi uh, point-and-click adventure games. And um, Trilby's Notes, Seven Days of Skeptic, Five Days of Stranger, and Six Days of Sacrifice. And they do, they're a single story that jumps around in time uh, from kind of the recent past to a near future to a sort of far future where it's on a spaceship. And it's handled really well. Um, I think the um, it's very uh, it's very toned down when it's in the when it's on the spaceship section. It almost feels like um, Event Horizon or something. Hmm. It's really really cool. Hmm. But uh, I was curious about something, uh, Raccoon. Why do you think the futuristic setting uh, wouldn't be able to convey the same emo the same emotions of fear and hunger? Like I think you it's know the you know when you you but... know when you look at a girl and you're like I like girls because I like girls and that's it. And when you look at a guy and you're gay and you're like, oh, I like guys because I like guys. And that's it. You don't oh, really so question, like, right? So it's so just a uh, uh, instinct I thing. see futuristic stuff on games and it doesn't really appeal to me. I don't have anything in me to make me go back into the Dead Space series, for example. I played it once and I just couldn't go back, right? Yeah, that's I cannot fair. go that's back fair. into many space stuff, yeah. It's, because it's hard for me to care <laughs> for it. Or maybe I haven't found anything in space that makes me feel like I want to just play non-stop. But Fear so Hunger saying, Termina. You're saying oh. it's too scary. And you're not brave No, enough. no, it's just <laughs> I don't feel like there's any emotion in me to go back into it. I haven't no, even I gotten it. scared by anything that is actually yeah. space related. Nothing about it. The core of, of horror is empathy. When you're playing a video game, you're usually, unless it's like jump scares, you're usually not like physically afraid of the game. But you feel like a tension because you don't want to see the character get hurt mm, yeah. or like a, a perverse kind of satisfaction because secretly you do want to see them get hurt. But, you know, you don't want it to be your fault. And um, uh, that's like a really careful thing that like horror, uh, horror filmmakers and writers and, and game developers have to walk this, this really thin tightrope. And um, I think in a setting that is too far removed from what you understand and can empathize with, um, it just breaks down. Mm. So I do understand that. Yeah, I, I I don't think too much about it. Like I said, for me, Miro can make it work to the point that it's going to be amazing. But I just, I don't want to risk it. I would always prefer just this setting or just slightly ahead just not futuristic but it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be i scary. remember you mentioned the farm when you discussed the possible yeah the farm sounds like a, such a good place to be honest like it's... that is like my the peak of horror and i would love to live through that what if it was a futuristic design. farm then i will kill you <laughs> <laughs> Why me? because you're giving an idea to miro right now shut the fuck up miro if you're in hunger three you futuristic farm let's go I, I don't even know if Mira watched my video in which I give my ideas on the possible ways to change the um, the items of the update. He might have. He watches this, this podcast that we're doing, so yes, he does listen to your voice right now. He doesn't watch your yeah, videos, but, huh? Uh, I <laughs> what? what uh? No, nothing. Sorry, what? No, no, no. He I, I made a video about the demo version of Human Hunger. He watched that. He also commented it. I appreciated it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, do, I really Mira do like here. it. Sorry. I was going to say, Miro, if you're listening, I'm sorry my voice sounds like this. I've had uh, COVID and my voice has not recovered, even though it's been a couple of weeks. Oh. Yeah, so sorry. Whoever's listening to this right now, you've got COVID too now. You've, you've caught it through through yeah. the internet. Yeah, sorry. I know. Oh, you know, you're like, joking. Yeah, talk, you're joking. Everyone about, has uh, been I literally going got through COVID, COVID after our birthday. Everyone stream, has right? been going through COVID. <laughs> I don't know fucking why. I haven't, I though. Gave, I, gave, I hate it. I gave you haven't. You, me neither. You got sick, though. So you got sick, <laughs> so. <laughs> don't get sick. <laughs> All right. Every, question, everyone cough on question. raccoon. <laughs> what? No, no, shut the fuck up. What? 
Um, oh, yeah, sorry, I, I sorry. really like the setting of Termina. Uh, World War... <laughs> I was just about to say, World War II settings are super underused. Um, no. Um, <laughs> well, Post-World War II settings. A... I think what does it is that we're seeing the civilian perspective. Yeah. 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 Um, other That's than... Cool. Uh, you know, Levi was a soldier, and I guess Pav is a soldier, but, like, we're not playing as Pav, and Levi is is uh, either discharged or he's run away and um we're we're not seeing like the glory of you know men charging into battle and dying bravely for their country you know we're not seeing anything like that we're just seeing like this place that's been like fucked to death by by well mostly by the moon but <laughs> what it appears to be and what it's evoking is the horror of war on um on the civilian scale which mm. just seems Every, especially in the context, once you know the context of the story, like the war is is totally senseless. The war was started by the new gods for, you know, reasons that don't really seem worthwhile. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, I think it's very good. You don't you don't see that in 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 games, you know. Yeah. Well, as a, as a certified Lagarde simp, I do have to say that the sacrifice was worth it. I guess the third game will show us if that's true or not. That's true. That's true. We don't know if it's worth it yet, but we do know why he did it. It's for logic. It's all for logic. So if you guys like logic, remember to thank Lagarde. I know you guys hate well, Lagarde. He did it so that he, he, did it so that he could be... <laughs> he did it so that he could be uh, logic, and then um, he screwed up. <laughs> yeah. Like how fox again. He always trips right at the finish line, doesn't he? <laughs> well, I want to see him back in the third game and like getting his pants pulled down and, and like everyone's laughing at him. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Don't do this to my regard. I think where I said that he, he didn't have anything really planned for Lagarde. He's got to show up though. Uh, he's got to come back. He's got to uh. come back. Because Funhagger 1 and 2 have just been Lagarde's story and we're just bystanders. That's, that, that's literally what it's been. It's, it's, it's Lagarde's story so far. So I find it really hard to imagine. A Fear and Hunger 3 without Lagarde, but it really oh. does feel like his story is sort of done. He felt very done at the end. I've I've got one. Uh, oh. You are playing as a descendant of, of August, and you're going through Lagarde's castle, and then you confront him, <laughs> and he's he's uh, he's back, and he's he's being worshipped as a god, and he's like, well, it's not by my hand that I was brought back, it was humans who, who did it. And then, um, he is, then he's a vampire the, too. He is a vampire. <laughs> and we just go into the symphony of the night opening. Wait, are we going for, wait, we need Jones here. We need his feedback. Oh, what is mind. man? <laughs> that would be good. What yep. is the man? Yeah, actually, I, I think Fear and Hunger 3 <laughs> is literally just symphony of the night then, isn't it? Okay. So well, we don't really need... I would, I would be happy with that. Yeah, we don't really need Fear and okay. Hunger 3. So good job, Miro. You can rest now. You don't have to make these games yeah. anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> I need Fear and Hunger 3. It's going to be so I different. Like... What if he skips 3 and goes for 4? Uh, that, that's that's fine. That's I, I will deal with it. Pull a Star Wars, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I oh, want no. to, um, I want to see, uh, I really want to see the, uh, the other four characters get their, uh, get their routes. At least two of them. I mean, I would be happy with just Samari. I think that would be really interesting. Six characters, isn't it? Hmm. Is it six characters? Yeah, because there's, there's 14 Oh, you know what, I wasn't, yeah, I was, I, uh, I was assuming we wouldn't get Caligora or, um, or, um. Oh. Henrik, I guess, was the other guy. Henrik, yeah, Henrik's kind of boring. Um, I, 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 I well, can't. Um, like... I feel like saying that characters will not be playable is like putting a nail to their coffin of people who love them. So we shouldn't do that. That's Look, scary. I've, I've already promised that if Caligura doesn't get added officially, I'm gonna we're gonna do a mod. We're gonna mod him right. in. Yeah. Okay. So here's we're my idea for the Henrik. Here's my idea for the Henrik route. Uh, the the route starts when you get to the uh, when you get to the mansion. You get chosen to be the new mayor of the town, and the rest of the game is a town building simulator. <laughs> where imagine, <you're... laughs> 
You're like playing Sim City with no money. That's why you can steal money from Rare. Oh, because no. you can actually use that money to buy more houses. <laughs> oh, you know, you know what it is? It's it's like it's like um like Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon or something like that, where you you mm -hmm. have to manage yeah. the town, but you also have there's also like a big cooking component to it too. So lots of crafting. Oh yeah, yeah, and you're like getting the um the contestants to move into the the abandoned houses <laughs> in Old Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you have perfect. to like you have to like match them up so that they're not um, living near people they don't like. Oh, this is great! I love it. Sounds already. like such a Caligula moment. I swear. The, the only moment. way there's no way to make Caligula live peacefully in the town. You have to kill him. Um, I hate it. I hate it already. Um, I changed my mind. You have on this to idea. invite him. I hate to, it. Uh, you invite him to dinner and then eat him. What no, you, you put him in the you sewer. You put him in the sewer. Like. Uh, no, not even in the... There, there are people in the sewer. There are Moonscorch people which are not doing anything wrong. Can well, I don't care about them. them. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, we do care about them because they are going to pay the rent and we are the mayor. Who are we? Only you? We, we are Henrik. Okay, no, no, here it is. Here it is, right? Here it is, right? Um, They ran down there to escape your, your rule, right? So you can't reach them until you put Caligura down there and he bullies them into paying for you. So Caligura works for Enric. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's the he's the tax collector. Yeah. <laughs> or or he makes it so miserable to live down there that they all they all run out of the sewers. There's this There's a ball sack guy eating all the sewage. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's gotten worse. I didn't think it could, but it did. You know what? I want to see Caligura beating up the death masks because they don't want to move their coffins. <laughs> 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 oh okay um this will be the last question we'll do one last question um yeah okay. here's um can you talk about the little social phenomenon and how when you've got a medium that is very bleak and cruel and it tends to have the most wholesome fan base and vice versa for a medium for like a game or a book or something that's very wholesome tends to have a very bleak and cruel Homestead. fan base Homestead. Um, just straight up. I personally, I think that this is a little bit of a um, uh, what, what's the word? A, a, a mistake, because I think that a fan base just gets crueler and bleaker the bigger it is, and I don't think it's got anything to do with what the actual medium is like originally. Or it it does, but not not as much as people say it does. And that bleak and cruel um, media, games, books, whatever just tend to be a lot less popular. My, uh, theory is, double, I guess. Oh, sorry. my theory is that the game already has you covered for Bleak and Cruel. So there's not much, like, you want to draw Kahara getting his head sawed off. I mean, okay, but, like, that's in the game. So, <laughs> uh, but you want to draw him um, breaking it down in the dungeons. Uh, also that's not in the game. That is not oh, in the game. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, also the, um, like I was saying, like the, the, the key to horror is empathy. And so people get really attached to these characters, even though there's not a lot to them. Uh, because Mito was very good at, at building these, like, sort of empathetic uh, little guys, you know, that you just kind of care about them. And I don't know about you, but, like, I, I want to see, like, like, Marina and Olivia having a good time, not, not suffering and dying. Hmm. At least point. in fan works, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People, people want to to arrange the media into a wide array of emotions, and when it's already dark, then they don't really need to do that anymore, do they? So they end up drawing nicer stuff. Right, right. Although I've I've also seen some some really terrifying, uh, really terrifying fan art that is a uh, that is uh, very not nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't talk about it too much, but yes, I uh, I have been at the I, I've caught the brunt of the not nice part of the fandom, so, and that's only that's only started happening since it got um got bigger, and I, I never saw anything wait, wait, like that uh, when it was smaller. Oh, so, I was we, seeing stuff out of like the the Russian fans. Yeah, but so which art were you talking about? Like they're the, the Russian, uh... so. Yeah. <laughs> huh? That's, that's a culture, bit of a cultural difference there. But uh, maybe like you said, there were there were so there were so there was some disgusting heart from from how you called it. Like, uh, what was it representing? If um, you want to tell it, of course. You know, bad things happening to people. 
I mean, there's, there's like a know. lot of torture fan art. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Torture is my man. I love him. <laughs> I'm kind of curious the, now. The bad things already happen in the game. In the game, torture literally cuts off your pee pee. Yeah. You wow. It, uh, that makes sense, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He does some pretty horrible stuff. I could see people liking him. And yeah, um, also, like, I, think, I, like, I love the way uh, he talks. Um, yeah. It's also part of like who is is who the fan base is made up of because prior to uh prior to the release of Termina, the the Fear and Hunger fan base was a lot smaller and uh one of the places it had gotten popular was on 4chan and um it was on the the V image board which uh has very different sensibilities from from like the you know probably us or um uh, especially a lot of like the younger community members that are around now. I can um, imagine it would have been very different in the Discord too, compared to like 4chan threads. Yeah, I am not super. I only joined the Discord um, like at the beginning of this year, but uh, uh, I get the sense that it it was a little more, a little more untamed. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> But it was also smaller, so it was easier to, to manage, you know. Yeah, the fan base has been really small until very recently, hasn't it? Like, Termina seemed to have bumped it up a bit. Um, not that I was a, a big big part of it before Termina, so, you know, I, I, I can't really compare that much. But it does seem like the fan base was way smaller before Termina, and then Termina, like, doubled it. But even then, that's, like, a drop in the bucket compared to what happened after all the big YouTube videos started coming out in the past few months. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was the, the Thanks, YouTube Worm Girl, for that, by the way. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, you guys have a lot more, like, combined views than I do on my two videos. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's If if, if anyone destroyed the fan base, it's kind of, you know, we're, we're definitely all at fault here, so. <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know, and then you, there's like the the secondary and, and tertiary uh, fans, like the people who just know it from the videos, and then they turn around and make really wonderful fan art or really funny memes, and then the people who know it, you know, pick it up from that. So there's this this like outward ripple effect that that is pretty interesting to watch because you know the game filters so many people, so it's oh, I think you get oh, a better look at what's what's happening. Yeah, I I get so many comments, people saying that like, you know, I, I love your videos, you know, I love I love hearing about the games, I can't play them though. And I I've, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't realize how big, like how many people were, were doing that. But I, like I just I still regularly get comments about that. I'm I'm just always always surprised at just how many people there are. And it's funny we've played the games enough that like, I don't know about you, but like I don't find the stuff in the game like shocking anymore. No, no, I certainly yeah, did for me. Except for did maybe the Kermoder breaking the wall. Apart from that, everything else is just uh, normal at this point. Uh, when I was playing Termina, I was talking to my friend, and I kept saying, I kept saying uh, to her, like, every ten minutes, I felt like something was happening in the game that I had never seen in a video game before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I got the. When I got crucified by the priest, I was like, "What the hell?" And then, yeah. like, the game kept going. Yeah, it's like, not a game. August not even a game over. <laughs> I was like, "What? What am I supposed to do?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that was. I think that was the really great feeling about these games is that they keep doing stuff that you're like, "Wait, games shouldn't be able to do that." Who let this happen? Yeah. And then the next thing, like yeah. the, the next room, something else happens like that, and then the next room, and then the next room, and it just keeps going, and it just gets it gets mm -hmm. worse each time, and it's like, surely it can't get worse. Oh no, no, it did. It got worse. <laughs> um, and you do get, but even sort of jaded towards it because there is just. You know, after spending 200 hours in a game, of course you're going to be right. But yeah, yeah, I, I do try to I, I try to, to keep perspective. I like I'll go. I, I play lots of lots of cutesy games in my spare time because I'm like, because they're fun. Um, but <laughs> it's like it's like a nice palate cleanser compared to, to fear and hunger. It's like, no, no, nobody's getting eviscerated. No, you're not going to get crucified. No, you're not going to get stinged and get anal bleeding in this game. That, that's this is a different thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so um, do we have any last any last comments before we before we wrap up? Well, uh, I'm just going to say that I had a lot of fun with this podcast, and I'm really happy to have 
Wrangler again because it's been a while since we talked to her. So yeah, I have my fun. Well, it's not been a while since uh, since Mao and Frappolo talked to me. It's only been like a week. Yeah. So hell yeah. Really? Do, you, do you just we not talk to out, yeah. Worm Girl, Raccoon? I thought I thought you were friends. Well then, I guess I gotta get Warren get into Homestuck. <laughs> oh I, no! I, I, <laughs> I, I I was into Homestuck when it came out. I, I read all of it when it dropped. Oh wow! I was Let's do it there. again. Let's do it again. Hmm. Are you gonna do a read through? We're gonna Homestuck on stream. Do like a thirty-hour long I stream. We're gonna see as much as I do. Gonna do a, a seven-hour Homestuck retrospective video. Fag. <laughs> that would, Is would, seven hours long enough though? Would, would you need more? No, it's not. It's uh, I more. think I would need more. Yeah, it, it depends on how deep <laughs> I went. Um. And I think I would go deeper. I, it's, I've been I've been tempted to actually do something like that, but there's a lot to get done it before would, that. It would take like six months to do that video. It would just be a whopper. Yeah, oh. I could do it in parts, I guess. But oh uh, yeah, parts. the real thing is once do it for you, each chapter. Once you, once you <laughs> yeah, once you get in a lane on YouTube, you kind of want to stay in in your lane, and I I wouldn't want to go too far out of. Uh, video games although it's worked for wendigoon to just do whatever the hell he wants yeah 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 um is is homestuck youtuber thing is that is that like a group of people on youtube homestuck youtubers there are yeah there are, there are? yeah there yeah, are there and are. also like also enough time has passed that there are like there are people who are like 20 25 who weren't really like around for it when it was happening you know they were they were like too little to to get on the train and now it's like you can't really go back to it. Um, you can. There's like a official thing you can download, but it doesn't work. So you have to get like a fan thing and <laughs> do all this stuff. And, um, but, like people are often really interested in that kind of like cultural archaeology. That's true. It did have a massive impact, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's got a huge impact even on on like uh, fear and hunger. You reckon? There's so much. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In the games even or if... in the fans? In the games. Even if uh, Miro didn't didn't play it, he's certainly influenced by it. Huh. Can Can you give um, any specific think... examples or? Um. So the the construction of of Termina. Uh, if you've played home, if you've if, if you've read Homestuck, uh, so Homestuck starts out being about four children, uh, and then about a quarter of the way through, it jumps over to being about um, 12 trolls. And these trolls are, each of them is defined by this, um, this, uh, special symbol and the special color of blood they have and this um, special monstrous guardian they have and all of these elements are present in the the termina characters you know everybody's got a soul type everybody's got a moon scorched everybody's uh and um it is a way that i have noticed that um that products that are um especially recently that are are kind of destined to have a fandom have constructed themselves uh, like that's how Steven Universe is put together. That's how um, you know what I'm talking about. Like a, a everybody's got their own special thing, and there's there's like one of one of each and everything. Mm. Um, yeah, I got where you have like the the soul types being like the zodiac thing is like in in Homestuck it's literally zodiac signs. Um, so you're, you're telling me that the uh, the moon scorch forms are Lucy? Yeah, yeah, they're the the Lucis uh, Naturae. Wow. Yeah, that makes a lot okay. of sense. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh no, Tamina is like, homestuck. Why are we? Yeah, why are we it's comparing? Homestuck. Where's that tweet that says it's just the nature of of humanity that every once in a while somebody creates homestuck? <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh man, oh, I didn't want to end the podcast on such a horrible note, but we have to you face reality. If you want, we have to face reality. Can. Ten minutes is yeah. home stuck. <laughs> now the, the only question that can de can debate that is: is Homestuck a JoJo reference or is JoJo a Homestuck reference? <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. Because JoJo has this going too with the stands and the 
Yeah. You know, where everybody's got their own kind of unique thing that you can kind of hang their character on. Yeah. Um, we'll, have, we'll have to leave that for another, think... another day because that's probably going to go for like an hour long discussion and Bones will definitely want to be here for that. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to take you a while. Jules would love to add the... He could talk about I it just by himself for an hour. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Homestuck's a JoJo reference because everything is a JoJo reference. <laughs> it is. That, you know, you know, you had to go back to basics sometimes, right? Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much for coming in today. Um, and, yeah, make sure everybody, uh, everybody listening now, make sure to leave comments on other topics you'd like us to discuss. We're still going through. There'll be, there'll be a Google form there if you don't want your name attached to it, or you can just leave it in the comments below. Thank you all very much for coming in. Thank you, Raccoon, for Apollo. And thank you very much for Worm Girl. Thank you very much for coming back in. Thank you. All right. Catch you next time, guys.